welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video. Thanks for watching. And welcome to all my patrons. First of all, let me start by saying thank you very much for your monthly support. Um, your pledges are very, very, very much appreciated. Um, you guys, with this first video, you are you're in right at the beginning. So if and ever we ever get massive, you can say I was there at the start. So once again, thanks very much for your pledges, thanks for your support, and I hope you enjoy the channel. Thank you. That my toolbox is actually my van. The whole van is my toolbox. Um, it can be a little bit long and a little bit boring, but it'll give you a bit of an insight into the stuff that I use on a daily basis. Some of, some of the stuff that I've got that I never use anymore because um, I don't really do mechanical repairs. And well, let's just see. Let's let's see what we've got. So, welcome to my toolbox. <laughs> So this is my toolbox and basically we start from the left on the left hand side I've got all my tools that I use most most commonly most often consumables bits and bobs strip light wired up toolbox at the back the secret shelves right at the back on the right hand side and my scope trolley and we'll bring you inside now and give you a look. Start basically right at the beginning. Three buckets of abrasive hand wipes. Ideal for cleaning throttle bodies, cleaning your hands, wiping up your mess. Um, you turn them over, use the smooth side. And they're good for wiping down panels and stuff like that that you've uh, put your greasy hands on. Next to that in pride of place. The Redline Smoke Pro. I was one of the first people in the country to get one of these and I've had a total loss, it's one of the first tools I'd buy again. So we've got a gauge on top for air pressure, manometer on the side to measure the size of an air leak and then the flow valve for increasing or decreasing the amount of smoke that's flowing. All it does burns basic baby oil, mineral oil, turns it into smoke. I've got my old school snap on battery tester which I never use anymore. Power Probe 3, dead handy. Use that almost on a daily basis, but more handy than that is my Power Probe 3 extension lead, which I use for my test lights with the 4mm banana jack plugs. Um, guaranteed power and ground there. Couple of, couple of cheap LED lights off, uh, off eBay. I don't know how many lumens they are, but they're bright enough and they're magnetic and you can bend them. Bottle of water for the Scanner Dana um, intake leak tests. Bottle of um, high concentration soapy water for doing leak tests on uh, aircon condensers and stuff like that. Various silicons over there. My glue sticks for my hot melt glue gun. My H4. I've got H4 bulb here. Um, wired up. So both elements are wired up at the same time. Just a bog standard H4 bulb in there for load testing circuits. Stuck in an aerosol can. Got my Midtronics battery tester. Bit of vacuum pipe. Hot melt glue gun. Great for just securing things temporarily. Old plastic, an old um, plug in soldering iron. Um, what is it, this one? Is it a draper? I can't remember. I don't know. Soldering iron, and all I use that for, I don't use it for soldering, I use it for plastic welding, just for melting plastic when I've had cases off BSIs and stuff like that, just for melt the plastic back together. Gloves, knee pads, syringes um, for putting fluids in, taking samples and stuff like that. A snap on nitro hand cleaner. For those moments when the abrasive wipes won't get my hands dirty, won't get my hands clean. Assortment of tubs and pots. And I've got under here, I've got all my different tapes, my gaffer tapes, masking tape, uh, cable rolls, black, red, yellow, black, red, cotton buds, plastic connectors, an assortment of 
uh, caps, dummy caps and stuff like that. Plastic connectors for pipes. Trim till kit, snap-on trim till kit. Really, really good piece of kit. Use it on a daily basis, that's why it's hung up on the wall and not in a drawer. Cable ties. Uh, crimpable hose clamps, rivets. Various, various um, crimp connectors. Um, fuses. They're, they're, these are old fuses but they're all they're all good they're all fuses that I pulled out of old fuse boxes and stuff like that impact sockets on a rail um, just just basically for me me common everyday stuff uh, miscellaneous bulb and relay box o-rings heat shrink now this is the this is the cheap type of heat shrink all I use this for is for making up um, my own connectors, test connectors and stuff like that. It's not epoxy lined so I don't use it for repair. Another box of fuses, these are new fuses. Another box of Saknam fuses, the bigger mega fuses and the and you know the specialist ones that go in like in the box hole. Things they're quite expensive so I salvage them. More fuses, lots more fuses. I use lots of fuses. Normally I use fuses where people say I've checked the fuses. That's probably one of the best tools I've got there, an old coffee cup um, with the end cut off it and I just use that to rest me scan tools on. Uh, what else have we got here? Block of wood, a few more connectors, a uh, bit, bit of two pack weld, two pack of adhesives, epoxy, plastic fusion, air tool oil, I don't use much, many air tools anymore but a bit of air tool oil. Clear nail varnish for sealing wires up after I've been probing. Aircon dye, but I don't use it for aircon, that I shove it in my smoke pro, mix a bit in with my smoke pro oil and it gives me a UV trace. Tipex for marking bolts, a bit of Hylomar, different types of Loctite, tub of vas for lubricating seals, Q bond, you can't do and you can't you can't do this job without a good good supply of Q bond. Super glue with the um, you can also build joints up with it, plastic or metal. Bit of spray paint for covering up bare metal. Uh, Moisturiser for my hands dry out. Different uh, power steering fluids and stuff like that at the back. Just I use that more for lubricating seals. Um, bit bit of uh, diesel cleaner there. This stuff, this carbon clean. Um, it's the stuff that you drop in a tank. Um, but what I use it for is when I'm cleaning EGR valves and stuff like that just to soften the, soften the carbon up with a brush initially it's really really good for that um, in most used tools I've got here a little blue point quarter drive socket set with uh, all my sockets in yellow mark for me 7, yellow mark for me 10, yellow mark for me 13 so I can pick them up dead quick I swap the ratchet out for the normal little blue point mini ratchet dead handy and then I've got a rag here which I keep over the top of it um, and that is covered in some very very special stuff I'll show you what that's for in a minute and then I've got uh, my snap on another another light another snap on light just hanging there ready for when I need it my 3 8 Great snap on battery ratchet, awesome bit of kit. Three of my oldest pairs of pliers. I've had them for had them for absolute donkey's years them and just leave them there. They're my, they're my sacrificial pliers. Um, cheap 3/8 semi-deep sockets, uh, snap on deep 3/8 sockets, cracking little tool this. This is actually let me get the part number on that TSR 125 and it's, it's from Snap-on one end of it's 19 and a half and the other end of it's 18 and a half for the Ford and Volvo lug nuts, wheel nuts they've got the chrome caps on 19 and a half for when the, crap, for when the cap is swollen and 18 and a half for when the cap finally disappears and all you do literally is that's the socket and you just put the extension in whichever end you want so you can get it the 18 and a half or the 19 and a half there 
Uh, so you get it at the 18 or 19 and a half. Three wheel nut socket, 17, 19, 21. Uh, my normal 3 8 ratchet, this is the Facken one um, that extends. So you can, you can extend it if you want to, or you can close it down just by pulling the collar. It makes it a nice little compact ratchet. Little 3 8 drive stubby snap on ratchet, a couple of extensions. Snap on 30 mil spanner, use that more often than not. Spark plug socket uh, on a UJ. Um, I've had that donkey's donkey's years, that. I bought that from a car boot sale um, off an old guy that was retiring. Brilliant, brilliant piece of kit that. Part number on that is. Is there a part number on it? Is there a part number on it? Okay. It's FSXK620 Alpha. So it's a, an extension with a wobbly snap on spark plug socket. A couple more extensions, another pair of pliers, different bits, different torques bits. Like I say, these are, this is the stuff I use on a daily basis. All sacrificial, it doesn't matter if it gets wet or dry, but if it does, what we do is we wipe them on that little rag there and that's got some special special syrup on it that to stop them from going rusty. And from there, old man now, so I need my T-handled ratchet and screwdrivers. There's one. And there's me, there's me big boy. The quarter drive bit, a quarter drive bit in the end, so I can put my quarter drive sockets on it. Um, Snap-on bit drivers. I've had these, I've had these for God knows how many years. I, they come in a set of three: one offset up, one offset down, and one straight. Another little snap-on ratchet and screwdriver, obviously, and then a bit set underneath. A set of cheap blue point sacrificial spanners there. Uh, snap on fa fast ratchet and spanners here and then my three special spanners here um, just get the 8mm so my 8mm there yeah, and it's an open end on one end and a socket on the other 12 point socket on the other dead dead handy, got three of them 8, 10 and 13 brake bleeding bottle still for sit on and we go on to meters, so I've got one meter there. This this is the cheap meter that was um, on the Snap-on van the other week on offer. ECM 5030, um, cheap manual range in multimeter on/off button, so you don't have to flick through the dial. Comes with probes and all that sort of stuff in a pouch, and it's just there handy by my door. Second meter is me EDM 504D. That's an auto ranging meter, um, but no on off buttons, so you have to flick through the dial. Um, I've got that one set up on a set of long, uh, long Veris leads um, with crocodile clips in the end of it. So that's one that I need for when I need long leads. Then I've got my old, old favourite here, my MT586A, auto ranging meter, um, on off button, and it's got, on this one, it's got the RPM, uh, um, duty, frequency and dwell, to also temperature me measurements, um, does micro amps, and I've got that permanently set up with the old Load Pro was the very, very first version of Dan Sullivan's Load Pro. This was the test light, test leads, and I've got I've got them permanently mounted on that. Well, that's my old faithful. That I must have had that since maybe 19, 
1988, 1989, something like that. Been a real good, real good meter that. And the one thing I did do with it years ago, I got fed up of paying snap on a fibre for a fuse for it. So I opened it up at the back, put two jump wires in, and I can run a normal 10 amp fuse through that. Um, saves me paying a fibre a fuse for my me meter. And then I've got my me, uh, me key tester. My key fob tester from Sealy Tools does RF and IR. Another little light there. Um, my Verus leads just hang down ready because I use I use my Verus leads on a daily basis. So they just hang there, they're not coiled up tight or anything like that. If you notice all my leads, none of them are wrapped up tight. Um, stop stress fractures and stuff like that. Then over here behind me, the blue lead you can see, thick black. Uh, thick blue wire, a couple of 4mm bananas on the end of it, use that for jumper wire. And then I've got these, then I've got, oh, got plain dropsy. Then over here, I've got his brother. So it's the same lead. So 4mm banana there, 4mm banana there. And then in line, I put an inline fuse holder with a fuse, and depending on what I'm jumping, I can go from a 3 amp fuse right there up to a 30 if I want. Nice thick wire. Um, so that's my fuse jumper wire when, I, when I'm not sure of what I'm jumping. So I can fuse protect anything with that. Homemade, cost me about £1.50 to make. Uh, moving on. Bungee cord there with all my crocodile clips on that I use regular. Pen bag. Got my trusty old Sealy LED light strapped to the van for when, I'm, when I've got no power. When I'm somewhere where I've got no power, I can also swing them down as well if I, if I need to. And on top of here, I've got my, my little vise. Um, all old components and boards and stuff like that that I've practiced my soldering on. Old ECUs. My, my pepper for my bob rill. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's a Vauxhall EDU injector driver module for the Vauxhall diesels. Re been repaired, ready to go. I get through about 10 of them a year. That's the good stuff, that there. If I ever get a bacon butty when I'm out or a burger, get some of that on it. Encona, West Indian hot pepper sauce. Every dag tech should have that. Um, my whetstone for sharpening my chisels. Because obviously you shouldn't be sharpening chisels on grinders, they get too hot. So that's my whetstone for sharpening my chisels. Storage cupboard. It's just a snap-on side locker. It used to be on the side of my box. Um, got a few interesting bits and pieces in here, which I'll show you later. I'll show you later, them. So then we've got in here... All my scope leads, my old scope leads and that, that I don't use very often, my long test drive leads, that sort of stuff. Bits and bats in there, gloves, um, alcohol wipes for doing um, board cleaning, heat shrink tubing, uh, test leads, millions of test leads, rolls of tape, all my learning, learning books, all my books and information in there. Connector kit there for building up my own electrical terminals. Um, what we've got there, battery drawer, let's get out of the way, battery drawer, we like key batteries, um, epoxy line heat shrink from Worth, uh, CDs, wiring diagrams, um, solder wicks, T-pins that I use, I'm just buy them off eBay or from the local sewing shop. Vag repair connectors. The spanners that I've got more than one of, relays, all that. These are the Peugeot Citroen, Peugeot Citroen engine management relays. I've got a black and a brown one. Box all flasher relay. Bits and bobs. There's the there's the black one. For the Peugeot, Peugeot Citroen, Ford relays. And then in here, uh, two, diff 
two different sizes of inline fuse holder all my ring connectors, tape fab uh, what's that, that's velcro that double sided velcro fabric tape for looming up after I've done the normal epoxy um, epoxy line heat shrink uh, crimp, uh, heat seal crimp connectors all this stuff I buy from Beale UK uh, 20, amp, 20 amp relays, I get through loads of them uh, just the, you know, the, the, the bog standard 4 pin relays, I get through loads, bags and bags of them and I buy all that from Beale UK online moving round we got the, the angry jester dag digit box bag of rags spare wheel wet weather and winter gear another green lamp above my toolbox got my hotel case with all my adapters in my various bag work gloves different boxes and that that I keep for bits I've got my old snap-on box here, I've had this for donkey's years. Wheels taken off it, bolted through the floor into the chassis, so nobody's pulling that out. We'll go, we'll go through the toolbox in a minute. And I've got my, my Veris case, um, with the other leads that I don't use. Don't use very often, so I've got my Veris case there with them. My smoke pro kit with my baby oil. You want, I tell you what, you want to see the looks I get when I go into Tesco's and buy a bottle of ba baby oil, a pot of Vaseline and women's tights for filtering fuel and stuff like that. Smoke Pro Cone, what have we got there? Oh, an old, an old injector bottle that I use for, I use, used to use them for funnels. Lucas A bottle with the end cut off just to make a different adapter. And then the the blanking caps for the smoke pro. Then we've got we'll get this down now. So we'll we'll go through them one by one. Um I've got a minute. Before I start doing that, let's just move stuff out of the way. I've got I've got everything on charge, charging up here. There's oh look at that. There's my old app from me from me landmine clearing stays. It's an old an old uh, Old Ebinger hat. My clearing some bomb disposal equipment. Ebinger. Believe it or not, it was a darker green than that. But you see many years in the bush that. A good mate Ken O'Connell, he bought me that. Well he didn't buy it me, he got it off Ebinger and gave it me when I was in Angola. It used to be dark, dark, olive green that. <laughs> right, so starting off. Relay test kit. EECT 60660 from Snap-on, very expensive but worth every single penny, apparently Lyle do a, do a cheaper version, I think Leon from Budget and Leggett, Leg he's, he's got the Lyle version, and what this is, basically, you get relay jumpers, I don't know if you can see that, you shove your relay in the top of it and you've got access to all the relay pins so you can man manually um, activate the relay um, do volt drop across the 87 and 30 terminals really really good bit of kit, you can also put your plug lead straight onto it um, your scope lead straight onto it and uh, made in China and vastly overpriced but worth every penny you got the jump leads with it, and then these really, really handy pliers for pulling relays. Um, yes, mate. You all right, mate? I could turn this off. Yeah. So relay pulling pliers. You've got a really, really fine end, so you can pull the relays out of boxes. Save, save showing your screwdrivers in there. And the replacement part number for those pliers. So it's number thirteen. If it will focus. Let's see if, it'll, if we can get you focused in on it. Alright, so number 13, and it is, there you go, LIL 46950. So it is a Lyle product. So all the part numbers, the, the ones I use the most is, is the grey one. Yeah, the grey one for the, the, 
the four pin American style relays and that's number one see if we can buy these separately so number one the grey one ECT 606661 and the next one to use is the white one number two ECT I can't even bloody read that 606 number two um, and then we get on to the big one is the purple and the yellow they're probably the ones I use more the purple and the yellow so that would be 7 and 8 7 and 8 which is the 4 pin big relay the same part number but 7 is the suffix and the purple one same number but the suffix is 8 so a great little kit that a really really good little kit like I say it is a Lyle product and I think the Lyle kit you get a little bit more in as well so if you're not sure of that you go and have a look on Budget and Leggett for his, his review of the Lyle kit but that's the snap on one part number again for those that want it EECT60 ECT 60660 and next we've got my cylinder leakage tester part number Echo Echo Papa Victor 509 cylinder leakage tester good bit of kit Doing it on. I don't know how people can do all this filming one handed. And basically, that's what it looks like in the box. But you'll notice it comes with the end not on it. And when you put an end on it, it won't fit in the box. So I've had to drill a hole in the end of the box to allow for the adapter to go in and for it to live in the box. <laughs> so again that's part number echo echo papa victor 509 cylinder cylinder leakage tester i've got my tpms tool from hotel this was supplied to me overnight um, by David Simpson, Mobile Eco Tuning. And it's the Maxi TPMS Tango Sierra 401. Nice little handy TPMS tool, dead easy to use, quick and easy to use. Quick and easy to use. Brilliant little bit of kit. So that's that. That's my TPMS tool. Again, part number for that is Tango Sierra 401 Hotel TPMS Diagnostic Tool. And that came from David Simpson, Mobile Eco Tuning. Very, very cheap. Hassle-free purchase. Got it literally. Asked him about it. Got it the next day. Probably use it, I don't know, two or three times a week. Never had a problem with it yet. And this is my radio key set. basically eBay special, different radio pins for taking out radios and stereos all the stuff that's on the shelves are used, you know, on a very very regular basis that's the case for me uh, cylinder, leak, uh, cylinder pressure tester um, cat converter 
pack pressure kit and that's part number this is a Sealy tool and it's Victor Sierra Echo 953 and that I'll, I'll show you that after um, that's the case for that and then my very very first cylinder leakage tester which you can't buy anymore and this was the MT324 from Snap-on and again the this I bought this in the 80s and that's how old that that's how old that boy, bad boy is that's seen some use that as I tell you yeah the MT324 cylinder leak tester how times have changed so that's them what's that book out my cordless screwdriver and then the last one off the top shell one off the top shelf and this is my fuel pressure test kit from Snap-on part number Echo Echo Foxtrot 1500A EU and they do advertise it as a master kit but let me tell you now it is by far it's a long long way off being a master kit there's an awful lot of stuff that it won't do so it comes basically like that with the gauge set all the adapters yeah meant to be for everything you can get in the EU but it's a long long way off being perfect so that's that that's the top shelf done Right, so then second shelf down now we've got my old laptop um, with my shop stream connect software on it and my uh, offline backups of all my uh, technical information I don't use it very often now um, but it's stuck in the corner just in case um, bits and pieces reference work like uh, component codes for Peugeot Citroen that sort of stuff we've got me Inverse Edge, Pride and Joy the Fleet, Autel 90S, uh, 908S, Autel 908, Angry Jester Diag Digit, kindly on loan to me for review purposes from CS in Northwich. What an awesome little tool that is! It's brilliant. And I've got my soldering and hot air station there, um, my alcohol isopropyl alcohol for my soldering, uh, flux, solder cleaner, my acetone, um, so that's that's that shelf really, this is really a use for me um, for my charging shelf and stuff like that, my work shelf, when my, when my tools are all charged up then I've also got my, magni my magnifying glass there, magnifying glass with a light for when I'm doing uh, e-proming and stuff like that just move that up out of the way at the minute now then at the back here we've got a million boxes cheap little leak off tester cheap little leak off test kit with tubes and bottles tubes are by far the handiest for top mounted uh, diesel injectors Dead, dead cheap off eBay. I think I paid about ten or about ten years ago for that. One of my Bosch KTX boxes um, for leads and stuff like that. The next KTX KTS box. Um, this is all the stuff that comes with the 590. So leads, disc drive, and that sort of stuff. Then I've got my air conditioning and fuel line disconnection kit from Sealy, part number VSO557. I'm 
and basically it gives you all the all the disconnect all the disconnect tools that you could ever need. Dead dead handy. Unless you just drop it now and everything goes flying. Aircon disconnect kit don't get used very often. Uh, it's but no doubt this summer I'll use it again. There's the why is that not shutting? There must be some. Number again, BSO 557. Then at the back there, I've got my old Renault test kit for leak off bottles, MOT 1711. That's the that's the Renault leak off bottle kit with the dummy actuator. Ah, I wondered where that had gone. I found it. So yeah, you've got the bottles, bottles, the dummy actuator for shoving in the IMV. I'm glad I found that. I've been looking for that everywhere. I didn't know where I'd lost that. I've had that years. I was gutted. So that's my Renault leak off test kit. That can go back in there. Um, this is my injector tester. Really hard doing this one handed. The yeah. tester for doing for drop testing injectors, um, Sealy VS two one one injector tester. Connect it up to the battery. Connect it up to the injector. Um, Activate it and you watch for the rail pressure to drop in the rail. Cheap, affordable bit of kit. Then I've got what else have I got in here? That's adapter kit for injectors, I'm pretty sure, if I remember rightly. Yeah, so a different adapter kit for all the different types of injectors for doing leak off tests. Me two AST. Fuel pressure testing kits, old Volkswagen Polo, um, bottom arm, uh, rear bush tool that I never ever use, uh, piston rewind back kit that I never ever use. Can't remember the last time I used that. And what's that there? I don't even know what this what's in this box. Ooh, what's this? What's this? I don't know what's in this. It's an angry jest or something. What's this, I wonder? Oh, it's like Christmas. What is it? What have I forgot that I own? Oh, look at that. Oh, I didn't know I had them. <laughs> Happy days. There's one missing though. What's that one from? Yeah, so reducers and stuff like that. I didn't even know I had that. Oh, it's like Christmas. Right, so yeah, so then going on for my charging bay here, this is a, um, the charging things for all my, all my batteries. Then under there, I've got an airline, a brake pressure bleeder, manual one, my two jacks, two axle stands, boost pack, my boost pack's the Sealy, uh, sorry, the, it's not Sealy, it's Sykes, Sykes Pickerman. ProStar 800, part number 861002 Sierra Papa, fantastic bit of kit, really is a really really good bit of kit that. Be two snap on, two ton floor jacks, part number Sierra November, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Sierra November X-Ray 2 CETJ. 
really low low at low entry jacks really really wide though dead steady there me two jacks and what I do with them I put them one either side of the car and raise it up raise the car up by about a foot just to stop me back from hurting then I've got all my, all my consumables there and sprays and potions and remember I was telling you about the magic stuff that goes on me uh, on my cloth and this is it XCP professional rust blocker I will look for that online if you can find it a couple of little squirts on that rag and it keeps all my stuff rust free really really brilliant stuff that magic soap for keeping your tools rust free then over here I've got all my, my long screwdrivers pry bars and stuff like that my bull brack my head torch five of the most common used test lights I use we'll get to them in a minute T-handle torx drivers a big telly that's everybody seen it oh look product placement that's my patron page if you want to go and have a look at patreon.com forward slash simply diag I'm going to go and pledge to me send me a couple of quid every month for me effort more than welcome there's loads of benefits to being a, a patron one of my patrons well you'll know that because you're seeing this video before anybody else <laughs> I've got my Bosch DCU 220 there just on charge using that and then my little snap on blue trolley now this is my electrics and scopes set up so what we've got in here is just all my electric stuff so we've got cable identifiers when I'm pulling looms apart and I need to know which wires what I just stick the coloured coloured clamps on so I know what's what Port sol soldering irons ratchet crimpers solder for normal solder fabric tape assorted wire strippers crimpers magnets pliers back probes resistors another test light I'll show you that in a minute a long bit set long torx bit set my little um, blue point blow torch feet shrink snap on battery driver for when I'm taking trim out uh, this is me proming and soldering drawer oh another torch lots of torches this is me this is me attenuators attenuators T pins different probes more different probes and test leads um, bulbs, spark testers, best little test light I've had, I've had that for years it's your normal indicator bulb, couple of wires and a couple of pins just for load substitution um, back probes, more back probes made these myself, so 4mm bananas with split pins in the end to go on my old, old type scope leads and then literally all you have to do is get that one then that then that and you stick them all together like so and you've got one very very long very very sturdy back probe do whatever you want with that you want to just put it straight into a normal now with that in there you can just put it straight onto a normal normal test lead whatever you want do anything with it homemade stuff really really good my Pomona piercing probes the two nice new shiny ones there um, kind donation from Matt prodiag.co.uk Pico, uh, Pico reseller training provider really good lad you just, just back probes and everything in there, you can never have too many you can never have too many back probes <sighs> everything's got jumbled up here right so starting in starting at this end I got two of my original um, Pico, Pico low amps clamps the TA-018 
with a, uh, a thin thin cable and a banana pl uh, BNC end then I've got the TA009 same thing 26 amps clamp but this has got the coiled flexi cable on it and it's also got at the end of it 4mm banana so I can use that on a normal meter can use it on my Veris whatever I want and then I've got the banana to BNC adapter as well if you want to put it use it on my Pico and I've got the snap on uh, low amps clamp so this one's 100 millivolt amp 100 millivolt per amp or 10 millivolt per amp and that's the number that ETA 503C they were on offer and the reason why I bought that is if you look we compare that to the Pico one I don't know whether you can see that the difference in the size of the holes so I can get the snap on one round battery cables whereas I can't with the Pico so that's them and that also comes with a handy 4mm um, banana to BNC connector then I've got my big Pico 600 amp clamp TA019 BNC connector on the end of it if we're doing relative compression tests and stuff like that and then my homemade my homemade BNC to 4mm banana converter another little inline fuse holder there that I've just put a couple of a couple of stabbies on the end of it so that's like my homemade fuse buddy BNC to BNC adapter my thermocouple for my multimeter for measuring temperature snap on TT600 terminal picks handy bit of kit that is my blue point mini driver set Oh, everything's all jumbled up. Yeah, so that's my snap on mini driver set. And that's part number ITC 9606 2BP. And I've got my snap on terminal kit. Um, I don't know, I don't actually know what the part number of that is. Um, but it's a soft handle terminal kit. And then I've got the obligatory red and green kit, which hardly ever gets used anymore. A couple of quid off eBay, that. So that's that drawer. And the last drawer is my Pico, Pico breakout leads. All different, all different styles, all different sizes. They've all got the four mil banana, and then you can choose, you know, different different end sizes. Uh, my leads for my KTS, for my Bosch, for my meter on my Bosch, on my KTS 590. Five meter USB three lead for my Pico. Pico leads, WPS adapters, WPS 500. Then I've got my um, Pico adapter kit for connecting my WPS 500 to my diesel pressure, uh, my diesel injector adapters and my glow plug adapters. The old Pico cop wand. Saw a lot of use in its day, but I very, very rarely use it now. That's how long I've had my Pico. And then this. I used to use years ago when I was uh, when I was training years ago, ESX 306 Alpha, and this is the snap-on. We can open it. We can get it open for you. It's the snap-on test board. It's the snap-on test board signal generator for doing scope training and stuff like that great bit of kit that 
I'll have to put that back in the bag afterwards. So yeah, WPS 500, all my hoses for my WPS. Um, what else have we got? Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this, you'll like this. You know Paul, Paul Dan is always complaining about Snap-on not making the test leads long enough. Well here's, here's my solution for that. Here's my solution for that. It's just a length of wire, banana on each end, and then one of them 4mm to 4mm connectors. I can make me snap on test leads as long as I want them. I can take me ground anywhere I want. That's when I'm not using my PowerPoint. That's when I'm not using my Power Probe uh, extension lead. Finally under here, I've got my old old gas analyzer. Yeah, the old two set reference cell's gone in it now, but it still does hydrocarbon, CO and CO2. It works very, very well for me what I need it. My test battery there, which is normally fully always on trickle charge. So I've always got a test battery if I want to make a, a test circuit up or something like that. My brolly. My big snap-on bar, I don't know whether you can see it there, that big fella. That's one big pry bar, that. that we use that one for bad payers. Um, what else have we got then now? So, oh, I forgot that, my snap-on Darth Vader wand, big long fluorescent light. It's your underbonnet lamp basically, but it just sits up here in my van for when I've not got power. Um, right, and now we'll get on to the good stuff. We'll show you my test lights. Right, so now we get to the grand finale. We get to the test lights. Your favourite tools in my toolbox. Let me show you what we've got. Right, so test lights. Now what have we got here? Oh, look at all them beautiful test lights. What's this page? www.buymeacoffee.com Buy me a coffee, simply diagnostics. Automotive diagnostic specialists creating videos to help automotive technicians improve their skills. Oh, look at that handsome devil there. Looks like someone I know. What does it say? Funding my 88 Master Tech accreditation in June 2018. We've had 11 coffees so far. So thank you very much for anybody that ignores that shameless plug and goes and sends me a coffee to help me fund my Master Tech accreditation next month. <laughs> right now, onto the test lights. As you can gather, I've got a bit of a test light fetish so starting from the top from my very very favorite test light is the OTC 3633 with the red bulb great little stabbing tool as seen on uh, scanner dan uh, every every man and his dog's got one of them and it's my favorite favorite test light closely followed by and they've all, basically they've all got different current draws and voltages. It's a snap-on test light, this one. And this one is, you can see it, the EECT3HL. I've fitted it with a red bulb and it's got the long probe and I've actually bent the end of the probe, I don't know whether you can see that, for hard to reach fuse boxes like the BMW ones, and that way you have to come at them from the side. So I've bent the probe on that purposely so that I can get it hard to reach fuses. Then we've got the little snap-on LED test light. Um, it's a little beauty, that is. I don't know whether you can see the... Can we see the number on that one? ECT2H. So that's a lovely little LED test light. I think that one draws 20 milliamps, that, that one. 
so it's computer safe that 20 milliamps then I've got my old Mac one she's been been with me a few years she has and that's the can I read that the ET120A LED test light this one um, it's got red bulbs for live, green bulbs for earth. Um, 612, 24 volt test light. And that one draw, that one allows through about 15 milliamps. Then I've got my two quid eBay special, with I think it's just a normal, um, well, it's it's just a normal bulb in that. That thing draws four amps. That one. And then. I've got me me pocket test light, the ECT two hundred one BL. Um, total waste of money, total gimmick. Don't buy it. Don't. It, yes, it beeps and buzzes, but it'll beep and buzz from three volts onwards. Uh, it'll just lead you down the garden path. The only thing that's good for is stabbing yourself with. Don't waste your money on that. And my old favourite, no longer available. ECT 313A00. The good thing about this, it comes in a kit. It's got a 4mm banana on one end, a 4mm banana on the other end of the lead, an extension lead, and you also get um, a male and female probe of different sizes in the kit. The great thing about that is, without having the banana jack, I can put it into a breakout box. I can put crocodile clips on the end of it, I can put different piercing probes in, I can put it in line on my power probe, I can do anything I want with that. It's awesome and we'll give you a demo of that in a bit. And it's it's newer, it's younger brother is this one, the ECT413. Only problem with this is look at that, it's a beautiful kit. We've got all sorts of different probes, little flexi bending probes. It's a beautiful kit that, again, 4mm banana on each end and an extension lead. The only downside to this is it's LED and it's got a voltmeter built into it. So yeah, it's, it's got its uses but it's an LED circuit tester. Um, quite a complete kit that. And then we've got the VR probe from Snap-on. And the part number for that is BPVR probe. And basically what I can do with that, I can set the voltage anywhere from half a volt. It shows me that me um, that's flashing, but it's not flashing if you know what I mean. It's set at 12.2 volts at the minute. And I can send it up in, ha in uh, half, I can send it up in half volt increments. So we want to simulate a 5 volt output, I can do. And then all you do then, press the button, and the other end of this, the other end of that becomes 5 volts. You get three different adapters, you get a spade, a big stabby tool, and a little, a little thin stabby tool. Yeah, well, the one we want to use, because we're, all, we're, we're almost always certainly going into connectors, would be the, the, the spade. And with it being 4mm banana, I can put any of my other adapters that I've got into it. But for, for you know, it, uh, it, it seems okay, but it puts out 1.5 amps, which is a bit worrying. Because in a 5 volt reference circuit, you wouldn't necessarily want 1.5 amps going through it. It'd be much better if it was only putting like 10 millivolts, uh, 10 milliamps or 20 milliamps out. 1.5 amps is a bit dangerous. But we'll just show you what we can do with it. So if I take the take the probe off the end of it, shove my test light into the end of it with a with my four mil banana. Mm. Nope. I'm just using one of my four mil banana adapters that I had before. Shove that in the, in the end of there like that. Shove the other end 
onto the ground. Same thing. Four mil, just four mil banana adapter. Put it onto the ground. And that into there. We're on, we're on 5 volts at the minute, let's press the button and see if the light lights. No. At 7 volts, will it do it? Yay! So the test light will light at 7 volts. But then if we look at, if we go... So basically what I can... Oh. Yeah, it's just a five volt, five volt sensor simulator, and five. It give me a, it give me a five volt reference. That's what that's what it's used for. It's come in handy a couple of times. And um, the only downside I would say with it is if you press the, you've got you can't press turn it on and turn it off. You've got to press and hold the button. Um, there's my peak on my four four two five. Yeah, so the the VR probe. BB. BBP BP VR probe 5 volt output 5 to well it's 0.5 to 7 5 volts to 7 volts it'll go ECT 413 and there's my little baby my OTC light 3633 so yeah, there we go. So now onto the toolbox itself. Uh, it's my old snap-on Aston Martin box. I've had it for years. Um, wheels are off it, it's bolted through the floor so it ain't coming out. Dead quick, dead simple. All the stuff that any any normal mechanic's got. Massive array, array of sockets, ratchets. We've got a bit of a ratchet fetish. Um, anything really that'll give me extra, extra leverage, extra access. Um, so, you know, we've um, a lot of the ratchets. We've got flex heads on them. Um, this is probably one of my favourites. The extra long quarter drive. That's the part number on that. I can't read it. It's the extra long quarter drive ratchet anyway. And you see I've got, got quite a ratchet fetish, quite a socket fetish. Um, and then I've got some uh, cheapo sockets here, ultra thin wall, but mo most of the stuff snap on. Picks and screwdrivers. Real pressure test uh, adapters, stethoscope which I use quite a lot. Um, the white loop you can see see here. This uh, this it's a lace curtain um, wire for putting lace curtains up, but it's brilliant for cable running and stuff like that. Bonus points to anybody in the video that knows what that tool's for. Kudos if you remember what that's for. Trim tools, scissors, wire brushes, that sort of stuff. Um, the VAG coil set from uh, AST. That's, that's done AST 4990 for pulling VAG coils without damaging them. Little quarter drive box hole set, um, various quarter drive bits, another bit set. Extra long torques with uh, wobble ends on them to get help you get into difficult spaces from an angle. Five point torque security bits. There's the other two um, little bit spinners that I was telling you about. One offset up and a straight one. Um, yep, we've done that through. 
Um, so in here, uh, safety glasses, yellow glasses for my black light. Um, belt tool for doing stretchy belts on, on Fords. In line sockets for, for BMW. Um, never used them yet, but for undoing fuel lines. Uh, double ended socket set from Mac for getting locking wheel nuts off. Quote drive socket set. Digital thermometer. Vernier. Uh, one man bleeding kit. Um, comes in handy sometimes, that does. Diesel injector cutting set. Airbag removal tool. Couple of MIDI vacs down there in the bottom. Ride bits, which I use very infrequently. Andy, look, this is Andy Little Tool. Um, Globe plug removal sockets with the slot cut in them. More stretchy belt tools there. Laptop. Uh, cables and stuff like that. Spanner drill for me, me big spanners, um, me ratcheting spanners, me offset crank ring spanners, flare nut spanners, that sort of stuff. Uh, all me adapters for me MITI GAC and me, me MITI VAC, and me various pressure gauges, different fuel adapters, stuff like that. Uh, sight block from Massey. Um, this is the first generation one with the Massey um, with the Massey pressure gauge. I think Pico are actually doing this now as well. Um, a smaller version of it. That's for doing diesel testing and stuff like that. And the big draw. We've got my two tech angle torque wrenches, my long half inch drive ratchet, breaker bar, laptops, interfaces. Um, VCDS, batteries out of me, tech angle wrenches, never store me batteries in me tech angle wrenches. More spanners. Actually there's some great some great spanners in here, I'll just give you a tip. So we'll look at look at that one there. It's the it's the Fakum, uh, open end one end ratchet on the other. And there's the there's the part and will it zoom in? Will it focus? Six one nine six two two eight mil. Really, really thin, ultra thin profile. Great for getting in uh, tight spaces. Um, my long flex head ratchet and spanners from Snap On, and then two tools here that I bought. These are actually awesome, these are. So these are a T-handled ratching spanner. Um, great for doing um, timing covers and stuff like that. I've got the 10 and the 8mm. Um, the part number for the 10mm. You can see it. RTBM10. Um, they're really, really good. Limited access tools. Um, I've got the 8 and the 10mm of them. Money well spent them. Various different crescent wrenches and S wrenches and stuff like that screwdriver drawer some more picks in there player drawer there's probably about a third of my collection of pliers that is This is me get me out the shit drawer. This is all, all me all my drill bits, cobalt drills, left-handed cobalt drills, screw extractors, air winds, re-threaders, um, the black box you can see there, that's me Sykes Pickerman O2 sensor kit. Uh, wiper pullers, um, battery post pullers, uh, a couple more taps and dies. There's a tap and die set under there as well. Air tool drawer, not a lot in there really. One of the one of the one of the tools that I use more than anything is that handy little little die grinder for doing security screws on ECUs, and that's made by Muller, and it's part number 
297001 really really brilliant that for um, just die grinding slots into security screws security screws and then that's the that's the bit set for it as well you get a pot of bits in it and spanners and that's part number for that where is the part number there you go it's a Sykes number I think that 902135050 right angle drill that will also go left handed air ratchets I don't use any air tools anymore now because I haven't really got a I haven't really got, um, well I haven't got a compressor um, so I only really use air tools when I have to and I'm at a garage with a good airline with a dryer on the system and then in here we've got uh, my 3 8 gun, uh, Mac 1 served me well my old half inch drive, 18 volt impact gun and drill and torch um, blue point bonnet prop, use that as a pedal depressor and all sorts of extendable bonnet prop impact sockets, my power probe 4 um, stud pullers um, that's, there's my vag my vag kit as well for doing the, the 12 points on the bags um, there's an old impact driver in there, all my old clutch tools and that That's where my hotel lives. That's me, me three quarter drive box. I never ever use these anymore. Um, like that's the that's the snap on. That's the head for that big bar there that's resting across the back of my box. Um, that's the head for it. Um, L eight seven two. And then the the UJ for it there. Um, I bought that for one job, that was a hub nut on, a, on one of these on a Citroen Relay and then I've got my old Britool, well it's my granddad's old Britool three quarter drive socket set and these are older than me they're older than me these sockets got me compression testing drawer so this is basically all this is it's all um, AST gear the glow plug adapter set the injector adapter set compression testers um, so these this is that adapter set there these I can use um, with my WPS going into glow plugs and stuff like that so we're doing insulin the pressure testing on diesels Pliers, punches and chisels draw. Uh, not pliers, uh, punches and chisels draw. And then the hammer draw. Auto electrician with such a brilliant selection of hammers. That's Thor, that's the mighty Thor. That red one there is Mjolnir nothing beats that and the next one to it is Mjolnir Senior I tell you what if you throw that at some bugger it's the Mac anti vibe one it's four pound I can barely lift it with one hand now um, I have to use two hands on that if I'm using that but I tell you what when you throw that at somebody it goes where you throw it it doesn't deviate it's brilliant superb for bad payers that one Last but not least, my old snap-on anti-vibe gloves protect me for when I'm using me uh, when I'm using me impact tool stop uh, vibration white finger. I've had them donkey's ears. Oh, there's my little torch. Great little torches they are from, from Snap-on. They're a coast coast light from Snap-on. I haven't got a clue what the part number is, uh, but it's quite bright, rechargeable pain in the arse because what happens the the contacts with the battery are there where my thumb is and they get uh, they get corroded and your your light stops charging after a while and the button also snaps off the end but I've had that one modified I've had a new button put on that so yeah that's it that's me me hand tools I've got loads of other stuff as well um, but not stuff that 
that's got a place on my van you know but uh, pullers and all that sort of stuff that I never ever use anymore uh, my snap-on bonnet light there I've got I have got a bit of a fetish for lights lights ratchets screwdrivers and test lights I've got me uh, my under bonnet light there which is brilliant one of my greenies another greenie there and I've got that tube light there these two here <laughs> that one there <laughs> blue one on that box orange one on that box <laughs> yeah I like me torches so yeah oh, that, I don't know whether I showed you that yesterday me uh, cheap eBay soldering station soldering in hot air 898D I think that cost me about 30 quid off eBay yeah so there we go the toolbox tour Uh, so I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, this brief toolbox tour and um, once again thank you very much to all my patrons for pledging support um, it really does it really does help obviously from uh, small acorns to great oak trees grow we're at the acorn stage but who knows where we're going to get in the future with your help and thank you very much and um, you've also seen the option for buy me a coffee that's going towards funding me ATA master tech accreditation uh, there's also a direct option to support me through PayPal just to send money to PayPal if you've got anything else that you that you want me to look at so as a patron if you go on to the Facebook group simply Diag YouTube you've also got a private chat room in there for patrons only um, both voice and text you've also um, I'll try my very very best if you need technical support I'll try my very very best to, uh, to help me with whatever I can and um, what else can we say yeah don't forget to go over and like and share my business page don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you've not already done so but being patrons you probably already have done um, yeah so we'll see you around let's chat get yourself in the discord server and we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat again thank you very much for the support thanks for watching and thanks for watching the video if you liked it don't forget to leave us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you didn't like it give us a thumbs down put in the comment section below and let's get a conversation started we've also got ways you can support the channel now if you look in the links below we've got patreon buymeacoffee.com and a direct paypal link thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel you're awesome